Uh, Leo, I think we got a buyer for Diaz's merchandise. Gotta give him a ring, man. Set up the deal, you know? Where are you now? You okay, Leo? You sound kinda different. Just tell me where you are. Who the hell is this? Put Leo on, man. Leo's gone away for a while. He left me in charge. Screw you, man. Damn, you stepped on my sign. Oh, for God's sake, it's you. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna need new pants. Hey, those psychos from up north, they've been on the horn, and they're coming down here soon. Now, where is the goddamn money? Relax, relax. We're not at that point oh, yet. Oh, I thought that you were taking care of this. I really did. And now those guidos say we gotta do them a favor. You mean I gotta do them a favor? Oh, of course that's what I mean. Do I look like I can intimidate a jury? I couldn't intimidate a child, and believe me, I've tried. Now look, it's either that or Ferelli's cousin Giorgio gets five years for fraud. You gotta take these guys out! I understand. Help the jury change their minds. Don't worry about no, it. No, 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 no! I tried that! The jury case didn't go so well. So make them change their minds. All right, more crap to wipe up. What did I do wrong in a past life? Some Florida moron. Well, don't mind me, pretty thing. Press the issue. My city is in trouble, and I think we're not really providing any serious solution. So far, we've got secessionism rearing its ugly head for the first time in a century and a half. We've got ignore it. And we've got give everyone a flower. You're all a, a little unrealistic, yes? Nice. Nah, oh, come on, man. Yeah, I'll just tell you there, my friend. friend. Maurice, not to say over opinionated and moronic, Mr. Crayshaw, how do we stop people running amok in the city with machine guns and heavy artillery? You've got to give a man a chance. Prisons are overflowing with wasted potential. Make the guilty men innocent once more. Free them from themselves. How? How on earth do you do that? Well. You could let them off. Marvelous. Great. That's a sensible plan. Then they wouldn't be guilty anymore. We've been doing that for years, you idiot. Yeah, how do you think we keep prison costs down? They, they ain't by magic or cooking the books. Did we save that for it? Remember, guilty is a dirty word. <laughs> you were instrumental in pushing through a bill allowing the manufacture and sale of giggle cream. A dessert with potential lethal consequences. Uh, not true. Only 23 people have died, and several of them probably deserved it. So, with people being set such a bad example by big business, how are they supposed to respect each other, to act safely in society? And how are they policed by a demoralized and underfunded police force? Well, I'm afraid that's apparently quite a difficult question, but my solution is easy. I'm gonna talk for a long time about a subject not in any way related to... Pretty soon people will forget all about it. I'll remind people that I have a great haircut, and that under my stewardship, Vice City has had on average 15% better weather than before, while crime rates only go up if you don't turn the graph upside down. Turn it upside down, and they have have. Have!
yourself under me, Alex Shrub. Vote Shrub for president and you'll have a friendly face in the White House. A man you can trust. A local man who likes gum. I can't believe this is happening! Innocent until I say otherwise. What happens with an open border to the north? The state is filling up with trash. People who can't tell the difference between a swamp and a marsh. Guys who don't know the first thing about the legality of marrying within the family. That's why we need a river. People, I'm telling you, pick up your spades, go into your garden, start digging as deep and as far as you can. Pretty soon, the whole state will be flooded and ruined, and then they'll have to leave. We must build a moat to the north or they will come down and ruin this great state. And Mr. Hickory, were you born in Florida? <laughs> what a stupid question of all the cheek. Were you? Of course I not. No one's been born in Florida since 1877. But I've been here for five years, which is a very long time. Yes, it is. Every <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, you're listening to Pressing Issues with me, Mark the radio. In this episode of Pressing the Issue, we had Alex Shrub, Callum Crayshaw, and John Florida Hickory discussing safety. I guess you've all got to make up your own minds. Should we be as wet as fish or a corrupt money-grabbing thief? Gentlemen, I feel we really got somewhere, and that Vice City and people everywhere know a lot more than they did before we began. And now, over to Jonathan and Melissa to talk to you about public radio in your area. You're listening to VCPR, the radio station for disoriented and unrealistic college professors who wear fuzzy sweaters and find everything terribly interesting. I'm Michelle Montanius. And I'm Jonathan Freeloader. Public radio is very important. You may have heard my recent... Hey, Tommy, it's funny. Uh, I'll just fuck that. I ain't got no suntan. We well, ain't got my money either, so I'm one of them myself. What are you doing? So tell me, Tommy, what are you doing? I'm looking for the money, Sonny. Don't worry. I am worrying, Tommy. That's my style, because I seem to have this problem in my life with unreliable people. Don't be an unreliable person, Tommy, please. Do us both a favor. I'm looking forward to hearing from you. Avery goes without saying, Tommy, Tommy, any progress? No, 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 tell me later, tell me later. Tommy, this is Avery Carrington. I believe you met at the party? Not in person. Howdy. Avery here has a proposition. <clears throat> Haven't we got other things on our mind? I'm trying to keep the wolves from the door. So could you please cut me some slack? I'm stretched like a wire, and even if I'm dead by the end of the week, I'd like to think that I didn't die poor. Now just okay? calm down, both of you. Son, you help me, and any greaseballs giving you a hard time, I'll see to it they take a long dirt nap. Okay. What could I do for you? This delivery company's got its depot on some prime land. They won't sell. They're hanging on like a big old prairie rat. So we gotta go in there and smoke that vermin out. Head on down there and stir up a hornet's nest. The security will have their hands full, and then you can sneak in and put them out of business. And you could drop by Raphael's for a change of clothes. You might be there a while, but yeah, go for it. Should be a riot. If the balls drop like they should, stop by my office sometime. Who are these pricks anyway? Lawyer pricks, rug-wearing pricks, surrounded by pricks. Or a 
region-wide discussion show, which is very lucky because I happen to host one. To discuss the subject of morality, we have firebrand preacher Pastor Richards, the head of the Pastor Richards Salvation Statue Organization, a group which plans to raise enough money to build a statue of Pastor Richards himself. We also have John Brown, leader of Moms Against Popular Culture, or MAPC, or is it MAPS? Map K, uh, I don't know. We're deep in acronym hell right now, or is it purgatory? And finally, we have Barry Stark, author of the book, As Nature Intended. He's the editor of Vice City's Naturist News, and is working feverishly, it says here, to bring more nude recreation to Vice City. To protect the dignity of our other panelists, we place Mr. B to put on a bathing costume. That's, that's also the reason there are no mirrors in my house. Nudity leads to bad, naughty things. Maurice, if I may interrupt, I haven't worn clothes since 1982. Clothes are seriously unnatural. Didn't you guys learn anything from the 60s? I had a revelation when I was in holiday in Germany. I'd always felt very constricted. Then it hit me like a slippery fish. Clothes are plain wrong. When you're born, you're not wearing any clothes. When you die, you're not wearing any clothes. I'm going to have to interrupt you there. What if you die at work? What if an enormous piece of machinery falls on you while you're working? Clothes lead to immorality. Nudity stops people from fighting. Have you seen an issue of National Geographic lately? People around the world are nude. You don't want to shoot a machine gun or a howitzer or a flamethrower if you're naked. It could burn or scold in quite a personal fashion, quite frankly. Have you been to the zoo? Animals are naked. If everyone were naked, there'd be no war. Everyone's complaining about crime and the theft of cars in the city. No one's ever stolen my car. No one's ever pickpocketed me. They've never even tried. That's because you're a degenerate l
I want you to know me and my people are doing their utmost to get to the bottom of it. If you'd like to talk to me more privately, you can find me at the boat, huh? Okay? Good day, senor. all about. I mean, I mean, I saw the hippies. What a load of claptrap. But what's your kid gonna do at a school with a name like Moonbeam or Wave or Horseradish or whatever they call them? How can you take your kid to a Little League game when you live in a communal farm growing drugs? It's awful. And that's what my life is about. Looking down on others. Yes, I think I can see that now. Moving on. Pastor Richards, in your book, you talk about putting yourself first and how people should not make sacrifices or help those in need. Do you want to elaborate? Oh, that's right. People need to learn how to take care of themselves and not depend on others. If you read chapter 45 of my book, I talk about how being selfish is a virtue. The best thing you can do for someone that needs help is to tell them to help themselves. That builds moral character. Morality, Maurice. There's not much left in this city. Every time a culture has taken on the doctrine of helping your fellow man, we get thrown into the dark age. Look at Russia. They keep trying to help each other out, extend a hand to a neighbor, and guess what? Every ten years, someone's invading, burning down their homes, and taking their toilet paper. Napoleon, Stalin, Attila the Hun, all of them. After you read my book, you will understand. I may have been born in the sea.